Oh my god, did you see that blister on my hand? That's from me pole dancing. What the flip is poppin' tube nation? It's your girl Sarah Baska again with another get ready with me. Let's talk shit about boys. Oh, I should have said men. That would have rhymed. Okay, let me do it again. Back at it again with another get ready with me and talking shit about men. Yes! Okay, that was so much better. You guys seem to really enjoy my last story time about me being vulnerable and me being rejected. <laughs> I was nervous to post that because it's just like, ugh. But you guys really related to it. You guys really enjoyed that. Since the feedback was so amazing i was like i have another story to tell and if you haven't watched that video go watch it it's the one right before this i just posted it you don't have to click out of this video you can watch this one too because this story has nothing to do with the last one so maybe just watch that after this one but that one was crazy and honestly i felt so validated by you guys because a lot of your comments were like no girl that's crazy and i'm like okay thank you so i'm not crazy so yeah everybody get a snack get a beverage get some ganj like i said just make sure it's safe we're not being messy on my channel Okay, just be safe, do legal things, and we're just gonna kick back, do our makeup, and just talk shit. I love talking shit hours. We can all just sit in a circle, talk shit, and just have some fun. Have some fun. But first, my tummy is grumbling. What am I gonna do? Oh, that's right. I think I got some HelloFresh in my fridge. Yes, guys, today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. It is the most wonderful and the most festive time of the year, and HelloFresh is here to make the most of every moment. From holiday hosting to dinners during busy weeknights, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes. And tis the season for saving money wherever we can. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout, so you can use those savings for holiday gifts or treat yourself. And you guys, are you short on time because I know I am. That's why I love looking for HelloFresh's quick and easy options like the 20 minute meals and easy cleanup dishes. They're big on the flavor, easy on the effort, and these time saving solutions mean more time with friends and family around the holidays. And that's the recipe that I'm cooking tonight. I picked out a quick and easy option. And I'm not even kidding you guys, this took me 20 minutes to make and put all the things away and clean up my kitchen. And the instructions were super easy, okay? It just gave me step by step what to do and the rice was microwavable rice so it only took me like 30 seconds to heat that up because as much as I love cooking I don't like to stay in the kitchen for too long and I don't like to use a bunch of ingredients so the quick and easy options are my favorite and as your calendar starts to fill up this season you can count on HelloFresh to get you some of your free time back by making cooking simple and quick each recipe and pre-proportioned ingredients come right to your door so you can skip the grocery store and a lot of the prep and that makes me pretty pet and are you looking for variety? Because with over 35 recipes available to choose from each week, there's something to please everyone. You can choose family friendly, fit and wholesome, or even veggie. Make sure you guys go to HelloFresh.com and use SarahBasca18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. That's SarahBasca18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you so much HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. Okay, now that we're nourished and we feel good and we're not hungry, let's get into it. Okay, so just a disclaimer, this story is not about David anymore. These are two completely different guys. <laughs> I just want you to know this, okay? I'm gonna name these two guys Cameron and Brandon. Cameron and Brandon. And Cameron and Brandon both intersect in my story, so there's a crossover here. It's like Sweet Life on Deck and Wizards of Waverly Place and Hannah Montana. It's a crossover. Okay, so we're starting off with Cameron. Ugh. So I was talking to this guy named Cameron, correct? And Cameron was so cute, we had history, okay? So me and Cameron had a little flingy ding. And Cameron lives where I live. Like I said, this is nothing to do with David. David, David lives somewhere in the mountains. So I was having this little flingy ding with Cameron, but with Cameron, since I knew him for a while, I just knew it wasn't gonna go anywhere. It was like a friends with benefits situation, but not even that often, okay? I barely saw Cameron. Cameron. We definitely did have history in the past, but then whenever he would like come into my life recently, I'd be like, okay, 
there's Cameron. It wasn't even like that intense. It was just like, oh, you're still in my life, whatever. We both knew that this wasn't anything. We established a while ago that that's what it was. Like we both communicated really well, being like, this isn't. And it was mostly me being like, this isn't. And he'd be like, okay, cool. But he was just like a genuine friend to me. Like I loved him as a friend, but he was hot. So like, whatever. Let me take this back to October, right? It was the night before my roommate Christelle's birthday. Every single year I do this thing for her birthday. I go to Party City, I get a bunch of decorations and I decorate the living room for her. Cause I just think it's so sweet when you wake up on your birthday and your whole living room's decked out. I think that's cute. And I think that that makes someone feel special. It reminds me of middle school. Like when it was your birthday and you would get to school and it's like, is your locker decorated? Like, do my friends care about me? It's giving that, but as an adult. And mind you, I haven't seen Cameron in a really long time, honestly, months. But we like send each other memes here and there, like we'll text here and there, but it's always just like a short little thing and then it's over with. Like I haven't seen Cameron in a really long time. And it's about 10 p.m. the night before Christelle's birthday. Christelle's like, I'm gonna go to sleep because my birthday's tomorrow and I'm like, period. So I go into my room and I get all my Party City shit out and I start blowing up balloons, right? Minding my freaking business. I'm listening to music, probably like Frank Ocean or Frank Sinatra some frank having a jolly old time and then my phone vibrates and it's not a text because it keeps vibrating so i'm like who is interrupting my little speaking of interrupting who is interrupting my little birthday moment for christelle it's cameron and i'm like what does cameron want at 10 p.m. I answer the phone and he was like, yo, I'm like driving by your house. Do you wanna like hang out? And I have a balloon in my mouth and I'm like, what? Like how close are you? And he was like, I'm literally about to be on your street. And I was like, oh shit. And I was honestly like pretty bored just blowing up all these balloons by myself. So I was like, yeah, you can pick me up, but can you help me blow up balloons for Christelle? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, okay, cool. So Cameron swings by, I bring my Party City bag into his car. I haven't seen Cameron in a really long time. So I was like, is this gonna be weird? Like, what the fuck? So I got into Cameron's car. It's a chill little car ride. And then we get to Cameron's house and we go into his room. Amazing, but so platonic, by the way. Like we didn't even hook up, we didn't do anything. I just kind of wanted to blow balloons with a friend, you know? We were just talking, we were just talking. Cause we do care about each other. Cause like I said, we've been in each other's lives for like a little bit. I asked him, I was like, so like, are you like dating anyone? What have you been up to? Are you like dating around? Any girls on your radar? He's like, yeah, I've been dating around, but nothing has really stuck or like, I just, I don't know. I just, it's been kind of hard for me to get out there especially in LA and I'm like I totally relate like I'm going through the same thing I was like I just feel like dating in LA is pretty impossible like, a lot of the guys out here are just not it I feel like if I were to meet a potential person it would just be somewhere else in a different city and he was like no I feel the same way and I was like oh my god totally but then he was like but there is this one girl that I've been talking to but it's not really gonna go anywhere and I'm like okay totally that was it Okay, that was the end of that conversation. So we're just having like a little giggly time. We're just like singing, playing the guitar together. It was fucking chill. Like it wasn't anything. It was getting pretty late. I knew we weren't gonna hook up cause I just like wasn't into it. So he just drove me back home to my apartment. Since we blew up a bunch of balloons, we put them all in trash bags. And so he helped me carry all of the trash bags up to my apartment. They, at this point, it's like one in the morning. Okay, I was there for a little bit. He just like helps me kind of put the balloon, we're being Right? And I could like tell that he wanted to stay, but I kind of had to kick him out because I was like, bye bye. Thanks for helping me blow up the balloons. That was a chill hangout session. But as I was like kicking Cameron out of the door, he kept trying to kiss me and I'm like, nope. No, no, just like, no. <laughs> but then he like caught the vibe immediately. He was like, okay. And I genuinely didn't think anything of it. Literally when he left my apartment, I was like, oh, Cameron, good to see him. Glad he's doing well. Glad he's killing it. I'm glad that we can be friends. You know, I think like there could have been feelings involved, but I also just think that it's just like history. I don't know. 
I decorated the apartment. It looked really cute. Christelle woke up the next morning. It was a vibe, okay? And then after that, it was just like the same thing. I would hear from him. Some He would send me a meme. I would send him a meme. It was just like not anything. And then my sister, my mom, and my dad came into town because my dad was having a Hall of Fame ceremony at his high school. My dad was getting inducted for the Hall of Fame. Way to go, Rick. Yes! He was the first ever athlete from his high school, football player from his high school, to go to the NFL. So there was this huge ceremony for him and shit. It was so beautiful. My whole family came into town. I was like posting about it, obviously, because I love my dad. I fucking love Rick. I would die for Rick. I would do anything for Rick. So I'm posting about it. And then Cameron, of course, he's just a dude who loves football, just would respond to my stories and be like, that's crazy. Good job, Rick, because we're friends. So I'm like, yes, Rick is a king. But it was really sweet of Cameron to like care <laughs> Cuz like you guys know I would die for Rick my mom and my dad leave and go back home the next day But my sister stays with me for one more day on my sister's last day. It was like a Friday night I take my sister out to this cute little like Mexican restaurant slash bar thing. It's really lit on the weekend We met up with Ryan Justine Rachel other Rachel Rachel times two we met up with them We drank some margaritas and we had a great night, correct? Christelle was at a show. She was at a concert with her other friend so she couldn't meet us for margaritas, right? So at this point, it's like 10 and my sister is a grandma No, I'm just kidding. She just had a really early flight in the morning So she's like, hey, Sarah, like I kind of want to go back and go to bed and I was like, okay, cool We'll wrap this up So we leave the Mexican restaurant and we come back to my apartment so I can tuck Rachel in and I was gonna take her to the airport So I had to be up at like literally 5 in the morning and so we go back into my room Christelle's not home yet. She's still at the concert. Me and my sister are talking I'm taking my makeup off so all my makeup is off and then I hear the front door and it's Christelle and her friend coming through and I wasn't tired yet I was still lit from the margaritas. I just knew that if I tried to go to sleep I wouldn't be able to so I was like, okay, Rachel go to bed I like tucked her in gave her a kiss on the forehead. I leave I go into Christelle's room I'm in just like a sweatshirt. I'm just in like a random hoodie I felt like a naked mole rat and I'm just like talking to her and her friend about their night about the concert or whatever And they were already lit too because they were drinking at the show and I was lit off margarita So we were just like yes and at this point it's only like 11 the Mexican restaurant slash bar that we went to is open to like 2 a.m and so I was telling them that we went to that place and then they were like, oh my god, I want to go We should go and I was like I was just there and I have no makeup on like what and they were like who cares? Let's just go and I was like Honestly, I'm too lit for my own good and it was a Friday night and I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep for a really long time I just know that about myself. I'm like I'm gonna be up till like 4 in the morning anyway So I was like, let's just go. Let's just go back so in my natural state, I have no makeup on and I have my hood on because my hair was a mess. We got into an Uber, then we went back to this bar, okay? And I know you guys are gonna be like, Sarah, you look fine without makeup. I know it's not just me, but when you go out to a club or a bar, you wanna be looking your best. You wanna like be looking fly. You wanna be looking snatched. Like who knows who you'll meet there and who you'll see there. So I was feeling like a little bit insecure in that Uber. I was just like, whatever. I'm not gonna let my insecurities stop me from just going out. But I still was just like, ugh, I just felt crusty. You know, you just like don't feel your best. That's just how I felt. But I'm like, I'll make the most of it. I just wanna dance. We get to this bar. We're having a great time. We're mingling, we're mangling. I still have my hoodie on cause I'm like kind of insecure. But I'm like talking to people. A few of you guys recognized me, which was funny. I talked to this one girl who watched my videos about like her boy problems. And so we were like sitting in the corner drinking margaritas talking about her boy issues, which was fun. It was great. Christelle kind of like swoops in and she's like, Sarah, do you wanna go get a margarita with me? And I was like, sure. So I was like, bye girly, nice to meet you. Best of luck with Kyle. Oh my god, he sounds like a douchebag and you deserve better. But like, best of luck with Kyle. Just don't let him treat you like that and cut him off if he keeps treating you like that. And she was like, totally. So we get a margarita. We turn around to walk back to the table where our other homie's at. Christelle bumps into somebody. And not just somebody. It was a fine... Ass man. 
such a hot man bumped into each other and then they were like, oh, sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I was standing there like, oh my God is correct. Who the hell is this man? And why does Christelle act like she knows this man? She did know this man. And they were like, oh my God, how are you? Kisses, oh my God. He was so hot. I was just standing there flabbergasted, but also like so insecure because I just felt crusty. Whatever, I just like sucked my shit up and I'm like, okay. I introduced myself to him. He was so nice. Oh my God. They're like, oh my God, good to see you. Blah, 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 blah. And then she walks away from him and I'm following Christelle. I'm like, who the hell was that? And she was like, oh my God, I, blah, blah, blah. I've known him for so long, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, T. But he was being like really flirty with her, so I was like, okay. And Christelle looked so hot that night. So I was like, get it, bitch, get it, bitch, get it, bitch. But then we walked away from him and then we went and sat back down at our table. Two o'clock just snuck upon us out of nowhere. The security guard started kicking everybody out collectively. So we were all just like sardines, just squishing out of the entrance. And now we're all in the streets. Everybody's ordering their Uber. People are falling over, but we we were just like, okay, we're ordering an Uber. And then the fine ass man that Christelle bumped into, let's call him Jake. Jake suddenly appears in front of our face again. And he was like, oh my God, Christelle, what are you guys doing after this? Like, is there an after party? And me and Christelle are like, no. He was like, we should hang out. And me and Christelle looked at each other and we're like, not at our place, because my sister is fast asleep in my bed. Like, we're not hanging out in our apartment. I don't want to wake Rachel up. Christelle was like, Sarah, what if we just, like, invite him and his friends up on the rooftop? Because we have a rooftop. So I was like, okay, that could work. Because that wouldn't disrupt Rachel. That could be kind of fine. And that could be kind of fun. And then I was looking at Jake, the hot guy. And I was like, wait, who are your friends? And then all of a sudden, this man came from behind Jake. And this is Brandon. Okay, not Cameron. Cameron was my friend. We blew up balloons together. But Brandon, this guy that I don't know, comes up from behind Jake and comes straight to me. Mind you, I'm giving naked mole rat. I probably smell bad. He comes up straight to me and he's like, you're gonna be there, right? When he said that to me, I was like, me? And I'm not trying to even sound like a pick me, like, oh, I'm just naturally beautiful. I genuinely did not feel hot, okay? <laughs> That's why I was like, what, are you talking to me? And he was like, are you gonna be there? And I was like, yes. And then he looks at Jake and was like, we definitely should go. Me and Christelle looked at each other, we're like, okay, what? These hot men are just like so down. And we're like, okay, I guess we can just entertain you men on our rooftop. What are we gonna do? Play a card game? Then once we all confirm that we're going back to our place, obviously Jake is so interested in Christelle and I have to entertain Brandon because he's Jake's friend, so I have to entertain. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, Brandon was really cute, but I was just not on my A game. I'm just kind of looking around being like, fuck, what am I gonna do with Brandon? So then Brandon comes up to me a second time as I'm looking away, like looking for the Uber, and he comes up straight to my face and he looks at me and he goes, <laughs> my God. And I was like, I genuinely made a face. I was like, Yes. He was being just very like, oh, fuck. And I was like, hi. And he was like, you have the most gorgeous face I've ever seen. Like, my God, you are so beautiful. And I was like, I mean, <laughs> thank you, Brandon. That's crazy that you say that because I've been feeling so insecure all night. He was just like, what? What are you talking about? And I was just like, oh, like, I couldn't tell if he was fucking with me or not because I was just like, girl, I'm in a Dragon Ball Z sweatshirt with my hood on. Like, you could barely see my face. And he was like, your face, like, you should just take your hood off. And since I already have like trust issues with men, in my head was just like, he's such a fucking God. But I was like, okay, Brandon, I'll entertain this just so I can be a good wingman for my girl, Christelle. But he literally would not shut up about it. <laughs> 
it's not that he wouldn't shut up about it, but we were standing outside this bar for a hell of long waiting for the Uber and he just kept being like, God, God, you're fucking beautiful. Like he just kept saying that to me and I'm like, okay, Brandon, I get it, but like, Jesus. I don't get it, but I do get it. I am hot, but like, you're kind of doing the most. The Uber comes, we're on our way to our apartment and they took separate Ubers, right? We get to our apartment, we're like, fuck, we need to bring like a speaker so we can play like light music. Obviously not loud, cause we're on a rooftop and we have neighbors. So just like some light music, whatever. So we're like scrambling around. Jake and Brandon show up to our apartment. We guide them upstairs <laughs> to our rooftop. And it was exactly how I predicted it would be. It was Christelle and Jake canoodling on one couch and then me and Brandon trying to get to know each other on the other couch I was trying to get to know Brandon and like ask him questions about himself, but he just kept complimenting me I love a good compliment, but it's so awkward receiving compliments when you Seriously, just look crusty like I just like we would be talking about something deep and then he would compliment me And I'd be like, oh, thanks, but like can we get back to what we were talking about? Okay, first of all, just for context, this is literally how I looked. <laughs> like, I didn't even have my hair out. I literally just looked like this. So that's the, con I'm just giving you guys some context here about just how strange this was. And for example, about like him complimenting me every five seconds, like I would ask him a question, literally as simple as, what's your favorite color you know just trying to get to know him i don't i probably didn't ask that but just for reference if i was like what's your favorite color he'd be like honestly i'm really loving earth tones right now um kind of like maybe brown honestly wait look at me like the color of your eyes because they're so beautiful and wait now that i look at you i could get lost in your eye just shoot and I'd be like, ha, 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 ha. I was like, okay, Brandon, your favorite color is not brown. Like. And at one point I just kind of like surrendered and I was just like, okay, you know what? This guy's just like very attracted to me, which is so funny. So I was like flirting back. I kind of gave in and I was like, okay. And it wasn't because I felt pressured to, but it was because I was like, okay, Sarah, just like let your guard down a little bit. He is really cute and he is being really nice and complimenting things, not only about your looks, but about your personality. But then at the same time, it was a lot. You know how when you're kind of like on a double date, just because you're trying to be a homie towards your homie and you're on a double date with your homie's dates friend, how like when your homie starts making out or like doing shit you kind of are looking at your date or whatever and you're kind of like do we just awkwardly talk over the sounds of them making out like i don't i don't know how to go about this right now because if we were to just keep talking we would have to ignore the fact that they were just making out you know me and brandon were just like fuck it and I leaned in first because it was just getting so awkward. Like Christelle and her dude were just making out right there. So we were like, fuck it. I was like, honestly, YOLO, who cares? So then we start making out. So the both of us are just making out with these men on the rooftop, okay? It was like just kind of hilarious because there was just like slight smooth jazz in the background from my speaker. I think that the smooth jazz kind of activated them to start making out because it was a vibe. I didn't mean for this to happen. I was just playing shit on a random playlist and it happened to be smooth jazz and it happened to like set the mood, I guess. So we were all just making out and also this wasn't like sixth graders making out it was passionate between the both couples it was passionate making out okay with smooth jazz playing and since both of our guys were like really suave and like very attracted to us it was getting heavy Ugh. and then once I started making out with Brandon I was like okay this is kind of hot so it was just a steamy make out and he was just like so romantic and would like whisper shit in my ear and it kind of made me laugh. I would like laugh because I'm like, oh my God, stop. Let's just make out like you're doing the most. <laughs> so then after we were like making out with them for a while, <laughs> I like happened to just like look over towards the door and mind you, it was getting heavy. It was getting heavy. And I see four security cameras just pointed at us. 
And I don't know why, but we just forgot that our building has security cameras everywhere, in every corner. In that moment, I'm like, oh my God, our landlord is watching us just get freaky up on this rooftop with these guys. We might get evicted, this is crazy. And so I was like, yo, Christelle. And she was like, what? And I was like, and then she looks up and sees the cameras and she was like, and so we were like, okay, boys, you gotta go. We don't wanna get evicted. This is crazy. Of course, Brandon's like, no, beautiful. You're so beautiful. I just wanna stay. And I'm like, I get that. But um, y'all gotta go. Bye bye. Please go. Christelle and I kicked them out. And then once we kicked them out, I was giggling so hard because I'm like, that was so crazy and so random, so weird. I want to tell Cameron about this. Cameron's the first guy that I blew balloons up with a few weeks ago, right? Cameron lives like kind of close to me. I don't know why. I was also drunk too. But I was like, I need to call Cameron and tell him about this crazy night. And maybe I'll go hang out with Cameron. He would think that this was so funny. And mind you, me and Cameron were texting that day, like earlier that day, just about some shit. Because me and Cameron are friends. So I thought it was chill to like call him. Okay, I did my eyeliner off camera. I called Cameron. Cameron ignored my call, he didn't answer. So I was like, okay, whatever. But then he texts me and he's like, oh my God, I can't talk right now. And in my drunk mind, I was like, shut up. Yeah, you can. So I called him again. I called Cameron again and he didn't answer. I was like, what the fuck? He just texted me back. Like, I want to tell him this funny situation. I just like hooked up with some guy on my rooftop and my landlord definitely saw that. Hello, I need to tell him about this. But he ignored my call again after he just texted me. You guys, I know that you're probably being like, Sarah, why are you calling this guy a bunch? Like, that's so cringy. But I want you to know that we were just texting that day. When I get the green light that he's awake, I'm like, answer the phone. I want to tell you about this story and then I'll let you go to bed. So I'm crazy and I called him like two more times. He didn't answer. And then the last time that I called him, I just left a voicemail because I was like, I'll just give him a funny little voicemail. So I sent him a voicemail being like, Cameron, I know you're awake. Me being like drunk and annoying. I was like, you never want to fucking hang out with me. I thought we were friends. I was just like being annoying and like dramatic. And I was obviously joking. I just thought it was like a funny little voicemail, whatever. I literally did not think anything of it. I was like, whatever, Cameron, like, fuck you. And then after I left that voicemail, he texted me again. And he was like, I literally cannot talk right now, but I miss you. We gotta hang out soon. And I'm like, whatever. Literally all I responded was like, wow. But like as a joke, like I'm not actually pissed. I was just like, wow. Me and my friends always do that to each other. When people are busy or they're like setting a boundary, we're just like, wow. But it's, it didn't mean anything to me. I was just like, whatever, I'll tell Cameron about this tomorrow or some shit. So then I went to bed, woke up, dropped my sister off at the airport, come back home. I go back to bed and then I literally woke up the next day and I had no anxiety. I was just like, that was such a weird night. And honestly, Brandon, not Cameron, my friend who I called a bunch, but Brandon, who I hooked up with on my rooftop, I was just like, he was cool. Like he could be a cool friend to have. Was he love bombing me? Who knows? And I was just kind of like giggling to myself when I woke up about it. I had no anxiety. Even when I was thinking about how I called Cameron a million times, I was just like, whatever, Cameron's my friend. I don't fucking care. And then I reached over to grab my cell phone, my cellular device. And um, when I looked at my phone screen, I see a text from Cameron. And I'm like, okay, maybe Cameron is just like willing to call me back about this funny situation so I can tell him about it. No, no, no. Nope. Wasn't that at all. I unlock my phone and I go to the message. Oh. And I take a glance at the message and it's a long paragraph. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. I literally like look, glance at it, saw the paragraph, put my phone down and I'm like, I started to get a rush of anxiety. I'm like, what the fuck is this about to say? I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck? 
And I was also getting war flashbacks to when David texted me in Vegas, that really long paragraph when he sister zoned me. So I was like, what the hell? Is this going, what, what did I do now? And it basically said something like, hey, um, my girlfriend <laughs> saw that you were calling a bunch last night. <laughs> my girlfriend saw that you just kept calling my phone last night and she got really uncomfortable about it. I just don't think that we should be talking anymore because she was very uncomfortable. Yeah, we should just like stop talking because I'm trying to build trust with her. And then he was like, I'm sorry, I didn't set this boundary. I, I knew that you had no bad intentions, but you were calling a bunch and she did see that. And I was like, whoa, I'm sorry. What? What? Girlfriend. I was like, oh shit. Oh my god. Uh. We were just hanging out like a few weeks ago, blowing up balloons, and you like try to kiss me. I was like, wait, this has to be like a new girlfriend then. Like, this has to be really fresh. Because we would text all the time as friends. And I was always the one turning him down. Like even that night that we were blowing up balloons, like I turned him down. And then remember when I was like asking him if he was seeing anybody and he was like, yeah, I'm seeing this one girl, but it's not really going anywhere. I guess that that's his girlfriend now. So I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. If I would have known you had a fucking girlfriend, I even asked you that when we were hanging out. If I would have known that, then I wouldn't have called you a million times and like left a voicemail. Like obviously I would never do that with a guy that has a girlfriend, especially like he wasn't trying to make it seem like my fault. He did say, he was like, I know you didn't have any bad intentions and I didn't set that boundary, but I'm just letting you know that we shouldn't talk anymore and we can't be friends anymore. I was like, oh. Like, I get it. I totally get it. Like, if I was in his new girlfriend's position and I looked over, my boyfriend was getting blown up because I did call him a million times. I did. I did. I did. I did. So if I were her and I saw that, I would have been uncomfortable too. 100%. She is so valid and I wasn't upset that he had a girlfriend. I was just more annoyed that he didn't fucking tell me that earlier. And this is my thing with men. It's a common theme throughout this year with men. You gotta tell me shit right when you know shit, okay? My God, I thought that it was chill for me to call him a bunch and like hang out with him that night because we literally hung out weeks before that and we text all the time. But because like we've had a thing in the past and she probably knows about me, that made her uncomfortable, which I totally get. Like I wasn't just some like random girl calling, which she probably knows about. But I was like, oh my God. Cameron, why were you texting me these past few weeks knowing that your girlfriend would be uncomfortable with that? Oh my god. Like, are you kidding me? I'm like, dude, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot with men. And I didn't feel bad at all. I didn't feel like guilty or anything because I didn't know. Oh my God. And I'm sure like she probably heard my voicemail. She probably like made him play my voicemail. And I'm like, Cameron, I miss you. Let's hang out. I want to tell you about something crazy that happened. Like I'm sure she listened to that voicemail and was like, why is she calling you and leaving these messages? But at the end of the day, Cameron did not set any boundaries with me or told his new girlfriend about me and that we were fr whatever I was just so flabbergasted by that text because it was like a long ass paragraph and I'm like first of all that sucks that we can't be friends anymore because you have a girlfriend but I also understand because we did have history it makes sense and I'm not like I wasn't gonna respond and be like whoa you know, I wasn't gonna do that. I literally just responded and I was like, damn, I wish I would have known that earlier. <laughs> but I respect it. Sayonara. Bye bye. Like, I guess we're not friends anymore. When my intentions were always so pure with Cameron, we were such on platonic vibes. That's why that threw me off. But I also get it at the same time. Like if I was his girlfriend, I would have probably done the same thing. I'm not stressed about that. I just wish 
that you motherfuckers would tell me things. I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. So yeah, I just responded and I was like, I get it. Have a great life. Sayonara. I'll never contact you again. Like, I just won't. And I'm not going to be the bitch that would ever do that. Like, once he established that boundary, which came out of fucking nowhere, because he just called me two weeks ago and picked me up from my house. Whatever. Once he established that, I was like, okay, whatever. Just crazy. And then I got fucking Brandon, the other guy that I hooked up with on my rooftop. Him just texting me being like, I had a great time with you, beautiful. That was so fun, beautiful. With like these like rose emojis. Like he's so like romantic. He's literally like Fabio. And I was just like, Nyeh. But damn, what? So I feel like Cameron's girlfriend hates me. And if she does, girl, I didn't know. I have not hit him up ever since. So girl, I don't care. I just wanted to tell him a funny fucking story. Anyways, that was the last of that. I know that this story wasn't as crazy as my situationship story. If you haven't seen that yet, go watch it because that one's way crazier than this one. This one just like happened to me recently. So I just wanted to get that off of my chest because I'm just like, why do men? Why do men? Why do men not know how to communicate or set boundaries? Because they're not setting boundaries or communicating with me. I'm just doing my thing. Just being me. I'm like, girl, you didn't fucking tell me you were in a relationship. What the fuck? You're hitting me up all the time and I'm just responding to you. But then when I, ugh, just craziness. Anyway, so that's my story. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'm trying to think of like more guy stories that have happened to me this year. I'm sure that I'm going to think of a few more. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you. Men are crazy. Okay, bye.